It feels real, doesn't it? The sand on your skin. The taste in your mouth. You are no longer death row inmates. You are contestants on the greatest game show in the world, The Jurassic Games. This is the most controversial cast we've seen on The Jurassic Games in years. Isn't this really nothing more than exploitation of these contestants? You are essentially torturing them on live television. Public execution is nothing new. My client maintains his innocence. I'm not here to kill anybody. I'm here to kill everybody. I am not the judge. I quit! We are not the judge. But the game is the execution. Wait, wait, wait. Not yet. Not yet. Come on! Three. Two. One. Uh, but yeah, thanks, thanks for calling, man. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. Uh, watched Jurassic Games on Sunday and was very surprised um, in a good way. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you never know. You, you get so many screeners a week and you, you suffer through a lot of them. And then when you get one that you're actually really happy to watch, <laughs> that just made my weekend. So yeah. Uh, oh, cool, man. Fan, Thank fantastic you. Fantastic movie. And like I told Katie a few minutes ago, I was I was surprised also with her performance. It was very chilling and terrifying. So. <laughs> well, I'm man. I'm so I'm so happy uh, that you think that. I'm really glad that Katie's performance stood out to you because I think she's she's a good little actress, you know. And I think she did a, I think she did a great job of uh, making that character just seem kind of you know. We purposely didn't really give her a lot of backstory because we just wanted her to be crazy, you know, and um, and we didn't want to spend a lot of time trying. We thought maybe it'd be more fun if we didn't really reveal what the mystery was with that character or who she was or what happened. And and I think Katie did a great job of sort of, you know, making that character fun to watch. Even like you didn't need to know what her backstory was. She was just crazy, you know. Yeah, it, it probably would have it would have ruined it if you knew too much about her motivation or her backstory because just letting her just kill just because she she wants to kill she's got no qualms about it. there's no redeeming factor it was yeah, yeah you you don't get that too often it, especially you don't get that very often with a with a female in the lead you, it, it's just it's unheard of because usually they try to soften it a little bit but there you just gave her a hard edge all the way through nothing <laughs> nothing to say well maybe I don't hate her. <laughs> Yeah, she was kind of, she was kind of the Ty Tucker, you know. We just wanted from the very beginning to to have that character be as opposite from uh, the, the hero as possible, you know. And and I thought that she did a great job. I, and I thought Adam and her both had good chemistry. Adam Hampson, the guy who played but the other guy, I thought they both had really good chemistry and it worked pretty good. Mm -hmm. One of the things we had, one of the things that we uh, had a difficulty with, or just tried to figure out how to do convincingly, was to make it any way believable that she could actually beat him up, you know, or, um, or, hurt, or hurt him in any way. So we just made sure that he was either kind of like taken by surprise or injured or whatever when he was fighting her. So it was more of an even match physically, you know. Well, that and he also has a little bit of wariness about hurting others uh, through a good part of that film. Exactly. And she is just so relentless. It's definitely believable. She doesn't care about getting hurt. She just wants to eliminate whoever <laughs> indiscriminately. Yeah. Um, how, how did the idea for Jurassic games come about? Um, well, you know, we, we, we wanted to do a, a dinosaur versus convicts movie. And, um, when we were talking about it with my sales agent and a uh, high octane pictures, they were saying, you know, we want to do a, uh, a dinosaur movie, kind of a hunger Games versus, or, you know, crossed with Jurassic Park kind of movie. And, and they were like, you know, just make the dinosaurs like clones, you know, or whatever, or, 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 and I just thought that was, I had trouble with it because I just thought it's not different enough or um, it felt like it was, I, I didn't, I couldn't wrap my head how, around how I would explain why it existed. 
mm-hmm. you know? And, and so I think I was like in the shower one morning or something. And it was just like, what if it was a game? Like, what if it was a running man style television show and the dinosaurs are virtual reality rather than real life. And it would make a little bit more sense because, well, yeah, the TV show would pick dinosaurs because everyone loves dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. And that's why they did that. Uh, and no other reason. And there's even a line in the movie where, where, uh, you know, tech, uh, one of the characters says, why do you think they pick dinosaurs? And the other one says, well, cause they tested better than robots. And that actually is true. I mean, we, we when we were, um, kind of like putting our feelers out to buyers asking, Hey, what kind of movie are you guys wanting? And they all overwhelmingly, you know, we were like, do you want dinosaurs or robots? And they're all like dinosaurs. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, it, it kind of came about, uh, kind of like, you know, trying to make a movie that would be appealing to international audiences and, and, um, but then sort of adding all these things that we knew people liked it, kind of this, uh, kitchen sink approach of just like trying to put everything in, you know, it's kind of, kind of fun. And we, we, we deliberately did that. And just to see if, you know, it's kind of like, uh, some people are like, yeah, throw it, throw it against the wall and see what sticks. I think we just threw everything against the wall and everything stuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, but, it's, it's the most fun I've had with a sort of high concept action movie like this since the condemned. And this is the condemned in VR with dinosaurs. So it just, it all works out so perfectly. Thanks. You know, one of the things that it was challenging to do uh, when writing it was to try to make it, um, I thought it was a really interesting challenge to write because there was three different perspectives you could tell the story from that mm-hmm. like inside the game. And then the perspective of like, you know, where the host is inside the control room and then the perspective of people like at home or at a bar or whatever watching. And so that was interesting because you could almost show any scene from any of those perspectives. So that was a uh, challenge. I thought, I thought when I was writing it that it could be potentially hard to follow. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was pleasantly surprised when I saw the first cut of it and I was like, Oh, you know, actually I think it just kind of keeps it interesting, you know, to keep moving back and forth between these, these different perspectives of the, of the story. So um, yeah, I, I was happy. I was, I was pretty happy with the way that it turned out. I'm really proud of the team. They did a really great job on it. I think everybody that, worked on it from the um, people on the crew to the CG artists in, in the end, we're all sort of like having so much fun with the project and so into it that they just were like kind of over delivering, you know? So it was just really exciting for me to see stuff come back and be like, Oh my gosh, that's like so much better than I ever imagined. You know? So it's kind of, it's kind of cool. Cause everybody from the very beginning believed in this movie and thought it was going to be really fun. Uh, you do give a little bit of a tease at the end, but w- will we ever get to see a, uh... Jurassic Games 2 with Dino Riders? Man, everyone is asking me that, and um, if there's enough interest, I have no doubt that those guys would want to make another, our investors would want to make another Jurassic Games movie, and you know, so far with the reception we've been getting, and, and like people asking me <laughs> uh, if there's, if there's going to be a sequel, it's already got my wheels spinning, and I'm already thinking of like, oh, I know exactly how I'd open up the next movie, and you know, what kind of power-ups the dinosaurs would have and what kind of video games I would rip from, you know, to, you know, uh, do all kinds of cool things, like take more advantage of them being inside of a virtual world where anything can happen. Um, so, so yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I can't guarantee, but I would love to make a Jurassic game sequel. I think the the story would be easy to continue, you know, because it's kind of episodic, like, a, oh, it would just be the next, kind of like the next year's uh, version of Jurassic games with, you know, upgrades, you know. Is it difficult to write for something that that contains this morally gray area where they're already convicted to, or they're already sentenced to death, and you're just killing them but profiteering off of it? Is was that difficult to try to show like that that balance between those that would be pro and those that would be against? Well, I thought that was the fun part of it um, because you you you're not the as the uh, people watching the movie maybe you're not sure who you're supposed to root for mm-hmm. you know maybe the maybe maybe the real bad guys are the people running the show you know uh and so i thought i always thought that was a cool aspect of the show is that you're kind of rooting for the contestants um you know even though they're these you know heartless killers and i think having anthony tucker's innocence being questioned was made it a little bit easier to say okay well here's a guy who you know is probably innocent so he's pretty easy to pull for but um i thought it was just kind of cool to, to show that like, um, you know, if you've got a, a motivation that's questionable as a bad guy, then maybe you start to have people think like, well, I mean, if they are going to be sentenced to death anyway, and uh, why not uh, profit from it? Why not make it a spectacle? Why not, you know, and I could see potentially society uh, going that way. And if that happened, I could see there'd be people that would be really upset about that and want it to stop and think it's, 
immoral and stuff. So it's just kind of fun to show that so that people can maybe think about, you know, wow, would this, would this happen or could it happen? And, you know, there's some lines that Perry Reeves says about, hey, this isn't anything new. You know, they had the, the Romans fought the gladiators in the Colosseum, and, you know, we're just – these people are, are sins to die anyway. So, um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think it was difficult. I think it was fun. It was just – it was fun because it wasn't so black and white as to who was good and who was bad, except for Joy and Tucker. You know, we knew, that, we knew they were, who was good and who was bad there or was supposed to be good and bad. Uh, out of the uh, the characters that didn't make it to the end, which was your which was your favorite to write? <laughs> um, wow, that's a good question. I hope you say little brother, uh, brother because I was rooting for him to win. Actually, <laughs> well, little brother was not written nearly as great as little brother was performed by Kyle, <laughs> uh, and that's the thing. Like, if you were asking me what was my favorite when I was writing it, little brother would have just been like a side character that didn't have much going on but now as you're now as you're asking me now little brother uh played by by kyle pennington uh the way he brought so much like energy and craziness to that character he definitely stands out as one of the most fun to uh to watch and i even i told him when we were shooting i was like man you are this character is leaping off the page because of what you're bringing to it keep doing that <laughs> you know so i thought he i thought he was great um you know, uh, Tiger Shu, who played Ren Saito, the uh, Japanese assassin guy, was cool because mm -hmm. he came to us um, and said, hey, I noticed there's a part in the script where I'm tied up with a chain. And he said, uh, and in the original script, the, the whole, like, Raptor Kung Fu sequence didn't really happen mm -hmm. uh, like that. It, it was more like he was just stuck and the Raptors came and ate him. Uh, and he was like, I actually know, like, chain-style martial arts. And he just started, like, taking his prop chain and swinging it around like crazy. And uh, all of us were standing back like, whoa, whoa. And, and uh, we were like, we've got to write that in. So we, because, of, because of that, you know, he, uh, what he could do with the chain, we added that into the scene and it, or into that part. And to me, that's like one of my favorite parts of the movie now when he kung fu's the rappers with the chain, you know. So, um, so that, that was really fun. I mean, it's kind of like it's fun to write all the characters, but then you see what these guys bring to the table when you're on set and it really starts to – some of them start to stand out. I thought – I thought Luke Wyckoff as the cannibal was really fun too, because he just brought such a creepiness <laughs> and weird, weird vibe to the part that made that, that part really fun. Too. Yeah. He's got, he's got those crazy eyes that just, you, you, you kind of get locked into what he's thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and for a final note, uh, where can people find Jurassic games? Uh, I believe it's next month. that's coming out. Yeah. On uh, June the 12th, it'll be on VOD. And then on July the 3rd, it'll be uh, on, on DVD, and you can already pre-order it on Amazon right now on DVD. Okay. All right, Ryan, thank you very much for, for taking time out of your shoe to uh, talk to us. I apologize. I, didn't, I, I was hoping that they would, uh, they would have told you I was calling. I guess there was a little mix-up in the communication. No, you, no need to apologize at all. It actually worked out perfectly because I'm, I'm on a break, and I saw, your, I saw the number, and I was like, Florida. And so it worked out just, it worked out just perfect. So, yeah, it's kind of weird being uh, an industry guy that lives like all the way down there because no one ever picks up a call when they see it's a, it's not a, a LA number. Well, <laughs> well, I live in Oklahoma, so yeah. Oh, really? I mean, I, I, yeah, so we're, we're we're in Oklahoma, um, but yeah, the whole the whole movie was shot completely in Oklahoma with like the desert and the forest and everything. That's all locations here, which is pretty cool. So, oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate the time uh, for the interview, and and I'm. Glad you liked the movie. I'm I'm really proud of it. As far as uh, you know, it's getting a really great response, and it just makes me really happy for my team because everybody worked so hard on it. So, thank you. Yeah, you, did, you did an excellent job. I, I really enjoyed it, and that's uh, usually it, it takes a lot nowadays of having to watch like five movies a day. So, thank you, thank you uh, very much for keeping me sane. <laughs> you're welcome, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Ryan. You have a good one.